Hello and welcome back to It's Not Just Black and White, where the topics that we discuss are most likely going to be controversial. So if you're easily offended, or even very difficultly offended, this may not be the place for you. As always, my name is Ali Leek, and I'm sitting here with Corey Bearclaw and Jordan Brown. Yo, yo. What up? Fellas, thank you for coming together on this glorious day. <laughs> I believe Corey Bearclaw just had a birthday, so happy birthday to Corey Bearclaw. Happy there you birthday, go. Corey. Thank you. It's another year, man. It's uh, exciting times, most definitely. Um, today we picked a, quite a heavy topic to discuss. You know, we're going to be talking about policing, uh, and we're going to be talking about what the word brutality means in the context of who the police are and what they represent. And what they do. Absolutely, yeah. So f we're just going to get started with some history. Yeah? Like We're going to talk about why the police were created, what do they mean, who, who established them in the beginning or, or whatnot. So, you know, I got a couple things on that. So if you look at, I just went back to Im imperial times, right? When there's emperors and whatnot, you know, I, I always like to take, go as far back as I can to see the things that existed then and where we can see those same things here. I really enjoy that kind of facet mm -hmm. of history. So at policing as like a thing that before it was established as like a municipal police force it was just imagine empires that used guards like to police societies but they were technically part of an army a larger army that defended an empire which usually answered to a general that general answered to a senate king emperor or whoever ruled those established borders you know whatever it may be and when for instance, crime went up uh, in a particular region uh, of that empire. They would basically send a number of troops, a certain number of troops, to patrol those streets. And then there's the usual royal guard, right? There's the Queen's Guard. We have the Swiss Guard, the Papal Guard. These are all, like, private militias to an extent of, like, very specialized soldiers that protect only a specific group. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the extent where policing before, it was just like a private enterprise where you would pay, whoever pays the most is the most secure. You know, it was mm -hmm. kind of a pay as you go type situation. But basically up to the point where it was established, the, the first Metropolitan Police Act in 1829, this is in England, uh, and that's when the first quote-unquote municipal, as far as I could found, yeah. the first police force that's supposed to protect the people or and serve the people. That's when it was created because around this time, like... I think it, they were called like like Constantinople's or something like that. Const you mean Constantinople? Const Constantinople or but something But Constantinople like? is like uh, the city that Emperor like uh, Constantine... Uh, Constantinople today is Istanbul. Uh, no, no, but I mean, no, but the... No, like the police force, the, they were, you know, they were called like constables or something. Oh, constables, yeah, yeah, constables, yeah in England, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So constable is like, it's like part of a hierarchy within that police force that's, oh, that's there, see, right? There's like the captain, yeah. constables. Yeah. It, it kind of, if you remember like Robin Hood, there was a sheriff, <laughs> the story of Robin Hood, there's a sheriff, you know, um, I forget his name now, but I remember that movie, Disney movie. <laughs> But the policing kind of existed. And that's, I mean, if we're looking at England, that's still, like, you can see it much farther back. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. all kind of all over the place. Um, and basically, it was those private militias. But I wanted to real quickly talk about the guy who's accredited to establishing this Metropolitan P uh, Police Act. His name is Sir Robert Peel, okay? And as I was looking into him, I found, like, this guy's quite an important guy that we never heard of. Uh, okay? Oh, really? Genuinely, there's a couple facts. They had a huge fact, but I only wrote a couple down. So, he was the son of a wealthy cotton manufacturer, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring that back around. I think that's a funny fact in here. Or just, uh, it's ironic. And uh, so he studied at Oxford, went to the best schools, best thing. He eventually served as, um, this is around 18, early 1800s, like 1810. So, he served as the chief secretary for Ireland you know, to the crown, to the empire. <clears throat> and then, in, this is the interesting fact, in 1819, he was made chairman of a currency commission, which brought about a return to the gold standard. Mm -hmm. So, in a lot of ways, he, once again, when we left the gold standard, and then it was established again, 
this guy played a huge role in that, and that's that's very significant in global monetary policy to have that, right? So I was saying that's very important guy, incredibly important person I, I wrote down. But I, again, I think it's funny the the Metropolitan Police Act of 1829 was established by a guy whose family made money from the manufacture of cotton. I thought that was ironic because our laws are based on English common law. Our police system is based on the same model. And the then English it was, model. Yeah, I mean, if you're involved in 1829 cotton manufacture, you know what I mean? They, you, there's slaves involved, right? Yeah. So I'm just saying, from the from its beginning, the municipal police force, a huge claim, has been fucked up, you know, or a racist or whatever. It's in the roots of the guy. You yeah. know, it's mm-hmm. terrible news. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. And uh, I mean, you know, I kind of wanted to go into uh, the history of like, the United States police, right? Or like the police force established here. Um, I know in the 1600s, before it was even the United States, our form of like police was up in like, the first one was in Boston. And they were essentially like a like neighborhood watch or something like that. And it was like the job that like nobody wanted to do, but you were just like forced to, right? And often, you know, people were, like drunk on the job or you know they would take bribes right so mm-hmm. like there's a huge history of corrupt. of a corruption yeah. yeah throughout anywhere from when it started just as like a neighborhood watch to like the 1900s where especially during the time of like prohibition there was just deeply rooted like corruption not yeah. only in police but like judges were corrupt like everybody it was like lawlessness at the point, but police it's like couldn't. like the mafia was doing. Yeah, a lot of but stuff the there, police yeah. couldn't stop any of it or create order because they were involved with <laughs> all of the crime. They were they were a part of the crime. Yeah, yes, they were exactly. the reason the crime was going yeah. on. I remember, like, I recall, there's like waves of time where the in like the black market that is the next big thing. Oh, cocaine's out. Everybody, you know, that's the next hype. Mm-hmm. Oh, heroin is the thing. It's always like you, you see eventually when the next wave comes in of whatever is the new product, it's a new group that's running it or supplying it or whatever. And then at that point, the money, you saw this in the movie The Godfather also, the money is like it's so much that you can't, nobody can say no to it. Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody gets in one bribe, let's say the entirety of their annual salary, they're going to do it. And this is at a time, you know, you didn't really have the, the means. And especially for somebody who's not educated, this is like post-industrial times you still yeah. you know it's not like now where people are engineers and shit yeah like this. and you know police officers uh aren't technically known for go- coming from college and going straight into the police force they they can get hired right out of high school they can get uh they don't tech they don't need a college diploma to go into the police force and on top of that they don't necessarily need the full high school experience they just need a ged to get uh to be a police officer and you only get six weeks of training to be a police officer as well mm-hmm. plus a lot of these those, those are great points Corey a lot of these police departments all have pensions right and those pensions are diversified to the same banks that way if there's a crash their pension goes down the drain same like regular people you yeah. know they mm-hmm. so in a lot of ways you know we want to establish here that we're not police haters or anything where we're just trying to expand on a very specific circumstance and we may we may argue that a very rare circumstance right and uh i think we're going to get into that so leading up to that let's actually talk about the evolution of what policing looks like in america and why at certain periods of time there's been let's say a hammer or a heavy arm brought down when it comes down to policing why is that necessary and what does that look like from let's say when rosa parks was protesting through when Rodney King riots occurred to now. Mm-hmm. Jordan Brown? Yeah, so, um, well, to understand um, all the policing in America, right, you have to start obviously back at the inception of America. And as I said before, there wasn't really any organized uh, mm. police, you know, municipalities, They're right? They're like militias. Yeah, a lot of them were militias or paid. Um, you know, like private type, like security or whatever. Like the Pinkertons. And, uh, yes, Pinkerton yes, 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 yes. And remember, so America was a divided like country at its inception, 
right? At the very beginning, it was already divided. Um, the north, a little bit more developed, more noble, you know what you say. Um, so they had their own little thing going. And uh, it, so as you said in like England, right? So uh, policing was essentially like not foot soldiers, right? So like police were like foot soldiers to do the bidding of politicians or like people in power. Maintain order. Maintain order and essentially keep like social you know, classes in check, right? So uh, there was like a social hierarchy in the North, right? In terms of like European um, you know, settlers or like immigrants, right? And at the time, like the Irish were like the bottom of the barrel, right? And that's why they even came to America because it was so bad for them back in Ireland because of like the British and whatnot. And uh, so essentially how it worked was the, all the like neighborhoods were like separated, right? And like, uh, so the Irish were at the bottom and the Polish would kind of like keep tabs on the Irish and then uh, the Germans would keep tabs on the Polish or, you know, keep them in check. And then I guess like the British would keep like the Germans in check or, or like whatever, right? And the Italians rose their way to the well, top. However, the that <laughs> was, yeah, but that's basically right. So they're like keeping this like social hierarchy. Mafia. Anyways. And then, so in the South, it was completely different, right? In the South, the whole like creation of the, of the police was to keep uh, the slaves in order, right? Mm -hmm. And they weren't even like police. They were called slave patrols, right? right? And that was essentially, they uh, empowered... So any so every like white men aged like twenty one uh, to like forty five, you had to serve in these slave patrols, right? And that right there, whether you had slaves, you didn't have slaves, because remember, a vast majority of Americans did not own slaves, only the wealthy did, right? So that was kind of a like social construction, right, to get to create a sense of like superiority of them, of whites versus, you know, like the blacks, right? Um, you were essentially empowering the white population to police the blacks and control their comings and goings. And uh, at the time, slaves were very like mobile. They were out and about. They had to do the bidding of their master or whatever. And, uh, uh, and they would have, they had to have these like passes, right? And like a vaccine pass. Yeah, essentially like a vaccine pass, right? Or um, like and a Nazi star, or the, not the Nazi star. Punch card, Punch yeah. star, David. Basically, yeah, yeah, like it's, thing, yeah. it's just like when we're in school. Bench. Remember like a hall pass? Yeah. Essentially, right? You have a hall pass. Are you clear to be in whatever. this area? Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So, these slave patrols were written into law. And uh, so you could arrest the slaves with or without a pass, essentially, right? And uh, especially if you saw them out in the woods or if they had a torch. Well, I mean, where, wasn't, wasn't part of the Jim Crow, like, if you see a slave that's, you know, you have to t pick him up and take him back to its owner Yeah, or so, so, like, Jim Crow was much farther after this, oh, okay. right? This is, like, before the Civil War, all of that, This is, right? like, before any of this. Before any of that. This yeah, like yeah. 1600s. 1600s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1600s, okay. right? So, so uh, essentially, it was, like, you know, there was a great fear of any type of, like, uprising um, by, like, the blacks, right? By the slaves, right? They didn't want them to burn things down yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And if uh, if they were found um, out or out and about or whatever, uh, they were, you know, subject to, like, corporal punishment, which mm -hmm. is on the spot yeah, yeah. there. You're going to get whiffed or whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, basically... From there on, right? And remember, it was like whatever they said goes, right? Because yeah. they were the law of the land, yeah. right? So even if you were out doing something you were supposed to do, they had the legal authority to stop, harass you, beat you up, yeah, could even like kill you if they wanted. Yeah, well, I mean, and also at this time, the slaves had no rights. What, you yeah. know, whether you're black, Irish, uh, Italian, whatever it was, like, if you didn't have rights, then yes. you, you, anything can happen yes, to you, right? Yes, but you have to think about how this translated into, like, where we are, right? You're giving them this sense of, like, superiority, yeah. right? Because you have the law on your side. Yeah. So you can do whatever you want, yeah. make up whatever you want, yeah. right? And 
inflict like punishment yeah on anybody right so if we think now right we're way past slaves right but yet these like police officers we have they can still they still have the law on their side yeah they have this sense of like superiority to us yeah right and we have to do what they say uh-huh. and if they feel like it they can stop question harass you mm-hmm. right poke you prod you and then if some and then if you you know if you don't like it you give them lip attitude or whatever then they just make something up arrest you yeah you have to go yeah you might get the charges dropped but you still have to go through all uh, spend all this money problem. go through yeah. yes yeah. yes so so you see this 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 problems right there are this like superior that was already created before there was even police right yeah. and this essentially turned into you know modern day like policing except now you can arguably say that uh, everybody, we're all kind of like the slaves in this like situation now when we, they have the politicians or people in power have their foot soldiers out to keep all of us in check. Uh-huh. Right. That's like the moral of the story. But just to kind of like wrap up my thought real quick. So, uh, in the, in, in like the South, right. So like police, um, were essentially non-existent after the civil war. Right, the South had to make up their own deal, their own form of militias, and this is where the 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 uh, Ku Klux Klan originated. Came from a way to keep tabs on the black population, right? And the um, but the Ku Klux Klan was so ruthless, so devastating to these communities. The North essentially had to send troops down to create order and uh, help, like keep these like black people safe right and then the south then adjusted this is where jim crow came from and you know that's where they found the loophole saying well if you like committed a crime then you could still be a slave and then so they were just trying to charge any random black person with anything just to keep them working right Yeah. yeah but anyways so to like transition into police and their their like corrupt uh, you know, history, right? So, um, police were constructed to police the poor, monitor, control them. Uh, essentially, like I said, they were foot soldiers of politician. Lots of obvious, you know, corruption in terms of trying to get people to the polls, like certain you know, people to the polls, and to keep other people out of the polls. And it didn't matter if you're black, white, brown, whatever. Uh, depends on whoever those police were in the pockets of, right? And, um, <clears throat> essentially this is where like the brutality like comes in so in 1894 they actually established the first police brutality commission because people were getting starting to get like fed up right with just being beaten down and there was no policing of the police right you know and that's kind of the point that I wanted to address today is that you know, the word brutality, that's not a light word and should not be taken lightly by any means. And at this point, of municipal police departments have been established to maintain order and in, in one way or another serve and protect the people, not only who they surround, who in a lot of ways they come from those same communities, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. people like communities where there isn't enough people to have police officers don't have that many police officers. Or there's not, like, sometimes, you know, there might be per capita too many people and the police department just isn't have funding, so there's, like, underfunded and there's, like, five yeah. police officers in yeah. the town or whatever. Yeah. But the point is the context, in the context of people who are supposed to protect and serve, what does it mean to be using the word brutal and brutality? Like, where does yeah. that word come about? Like, mm. why is it necessary to be in? Yeah, well, you know, in that... 19, or 1894 um, yeah, yeah, police and brutality commission uh, tens of thousands of like papers were like turned in of like documentation of these of these incidents that people were like complaining about right and uh, they actually found that police were like beating up people in the north in the same way they were you know harming people in the south right mm-hmm. or blacks in the south so Imagine if a despised immigrant, so say an Irishman, walks into a, you know, like the wrong like neighborhood, uh, the police would like beat them up essentially on site for being in that that wrong like neighborhood. Yeah, yeah and 
you know and then uh after they looked into you know the whole deal uh they ended up charging i think like 43 uh, police officers with assault um and they found uh that they were also harming these these like immigrants to get a certain you know, political outcome most of the time yeah or yeah. reach a certain quota too. Yeah, that, you know, that too. Get a certain amount of rest, get a certain amount of tickets, give them to the, the people who, yeah. you know, that that can't really fight back because if you try and give a, give a ticket to a rich person, they'll hire this great lawyer to fight that case and mm-hmm. then they won't ever get the money mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they need for the city. And then yeah. what definitely doesn't help is the privatization of prisons, right? And yeah. Then, there's already they already caught a couple judges who have a quota for how many people they put into facilities and centers, and then they then get a check from this facility mm-hmm. for putting that guy mm-hmm. or whoever yeah. in there. Yeah, and there's, and a, there's a saying that uh, laws that are punished by a fine were only meant to punish the poor people. They're not meant to punish rich people because rich people don't care about paying five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. They'll commit that crime and met. Uh, time million and time dollars. again because they can they can just pay it off and do it again and do it again. Million do it again. Dollars. Yeah. I mean that's excessive. Yeah. Fifty million dollars. No, that's no, that's just, maybe not on an individual basis, but companies have Volkswagen has paid billion dollars, right? Like oh, yes, yeah, yeah. of course, yes. That's true. I mean yeah. that's because of policing that they had to pay that fine and even that doesn't matter. This stock is up, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But you know, it's kind of like it's kind of like mind boggling, right? Because this is like in the eighteen hundreds. So and America is a very new country, right? It's only been around for like 200 years at One this of the point. Newest. Yeah, only like 200 years at this point. So that's like two generations of an established like police force, and it's already corrupt. <laughs> like you two know, like, centuries. There's, yeah, there, but each century has about four four generations. Well, if you think you know, like somebody lives. Uh, you know, like what, like 60, 70 years? That's like yeah, but people um, only be in a police force for like 20, uh, let's say for on 20s? average twenty to twenty five years. Yeah, <clears throat> you exactly. know, like you have the people who are thirty years in; they're pretty much the chief, or you know, all the way up there. Yeah, but there yeah, aren't yeah. all those people doing that. Yeah. Um, so you have, I would say, on average four to five max. Um, but in that time, even if you, you have eight generations. And you still got the same problems going on from day one to day two hundred years. It's it's kind of it, yeah. You need to learn your lessons. Yeah, once in the a while. basics is just you know from the beginning, right? We have these like problems. And then in terms, you know, after these eight generations, like I said before, we still have these brutal acts of violence from police officers. Uh, you know, the most popular one of today is the one of Chauvin, um, which is. I would say one of the most controversial arrests slash deaths slash convictions of a police officer because you have one side saying he he, it, he shouldn't have been convicted of murder. You have the other side saying he should receive the death penalty and you, you have all the middle in between. Um, and, you know, just to start off, Ali, what is your perspective of, you know, just the uh, arrest of Derek, I mean, of George Floyd and Chauvin's action? Well... Thank you for the question. Well, we, we just watched the video once again, but we actually watched like the full video. It wasn't edited. And we watched it and we wanted to decide for ourselves what we think, right? There's a number of things that we were asking ahead of time uh, about his procedure. What would it be or what, what does it look like? Where does it, you know, did he follow protocol? Was he the only one involved? And from the video, we can see that he wasn't the only guy there. He was actually only also just there around the end when he was uh, not being handcuffed, but being like restrained correctly. And that's when he started saying, I can't breathe for minutes on end. Six minutes? Do you remember how it's minutes on end? Nine minutes. I I believe it was nine minutes and like 23 seconds or something. It was the longest nine minutes. But he was dead before that. Yes. He was 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 dead dead like five minutes in. Yeah. But you see, but. Sorry to cut you off. Okay. How you're saying how you see how Chauvin in the video was almost one of the last officers to kind of implement force because in the beginning of the video you see two other officers handling the entire arrest or just doing the whole process and procedure trying to get Chauvin into and George Floyd into the car. And then you see Chauvin come on the other side when they're trying to shove George Floyd into the car. And George Floyd tried getting outside the other side of the car 
and that's when Chauvin enters. So it's kind of an interesting perspective to think Chauvin wasn't the initial arresting officer. He kind of, I would say in a way, was in, a, in the wrong place at the wrong time, but also, you know, his actions going forward were negative, were bad, so on and so, so forth. So what was the verdict? What did he get? Manslaughter? What did he get? He In was commentary? convicted of, I believe, second degree and third degree murder. So, okay, like a few specific things. So there's so a number of differences in these degrees. I didn't know this until I looked this up for this thing, right? So I wanted to say a few points on, on some of them, right? So if you look at manslaughter, is defined as the unlawful killing of a human without malice aforethought or not like thinking about it before yeah you, you accidentally killed yeah. somebody it comes yeah. yeah it comes in the heat of the moment so a lot of them are like you know you maybe like a car accident so or you guys are yeah. both right but with manslaughter there's the two distinctions which is voluntary and involuntary mm -hmm. so you're saying one and you're saying the other yeah. but you're both right so voluntary is the heat of passion right like you, it's remember we were talking about how it's explainable if somebody kills somebody because they love them and they cheat it so this is the same thing, but it's the person accused um, kills a person, but by being provoked in one way. And then provoked, this is where laws really get uh, shaky because all of this, all of laws, they're all up to interpretation. Once you establish mm -hmm. a precedent, mm -hmm. it's all up to the interpretation of that precedent. Yeah. And that's why I don't like law that much. But That's actually my favorite part of law. I, you're right, but it's, it's fucked up. Like you can basically... You can make Whoever anything tells your the own best story, dude. Yeah. But yeah. That's the whole the point story. of law is that like every single every individual situation, situation is, different. is different and it's, yeah, it's listen, an individual so case. The devil also had a silver tongue, all right? Relax. Like, it's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. But, My lawyers are associated <laughs> with the devil. Then there's involuntary, right? Which is unintentional death. This is the yes, yes. Uh, texting. So texting, drinking, and driving. And this yeah. is the point of interpretation because now we can say that if you text and drive or you drink and drive it could most definitely lead into death right somebody's yes. gonna die yes but it's not it's up to the interpretation of that because yeah. it's not exact it's yeah. involuntary yeah. versus well you know you hear these like stories where like somebody will get into like a fist fight and they'll hit someone you know they kind of like get knocked out they fall down hit their head they die yeah right that, yeah that's your i believe that would context is and i like never got this either because it's like it's like assault 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 and then when i touch you it's battery you know what i mean yeah. and then blowing smoke at somebody is assault i didn't yeah. know that yeah. you know that's a very yeah. intense one anyway we can sidetrack and this first degree, like, yeah in this first degree which first degree murder first degree murder sorry <laughs> not first degree burns first degree murder thank you for keeping it like Corey Bird, this guy's good this is like premeditated yes yeah you're planning so it. that's what's needed and then the killing occurs while another crime is taking place so like a robbery or an arson mm -hmm. you so broke in to murder them or you broke in and no, you so had and you had a gun and you would shoot you plan to shoot anybody if, yeah, like they if were this is where the interpreters come in because like you're going there for a robbery not to kill somebody but it's still first degree and yeah. i mean if you plan the robbery then you they can yeah. argue yeah, first yeah. degree so second degree is intent to murder someone but no premeditation so I, if a good lawyer can get him to that second degree murder, actually, okay? But now you look at third degree. Third degree is a very specific case. Oh, wait, what do you mean intent to murder, but, but in the, you mean like, it, whether no premeditation? No pre so you're you didn't saying, make a plan. You didn't make a plan about yeah. it. But it just came at, at the Yeah, you at took the opportunity. Time. Yeah, so there, the second degree with this guy implies that he just wanted to kill a black guy. And that's why with the first chance he got, he did it. But that's a stretch, but we can talk about that, you know? But that's what second degree is, is from what I'm getting from this. And then third degree, because he can, they're, they're in Minnesota, is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, Minneapolis, yeah. So Minneapolis, Minnesota. So third degree, this is where it comes in. It's only in Florida. It's, it's only in, uh, enforced in Florida, Minnesota, Minnesota. and um, Pennsylvania. Okay, and this is, it's something that it belongs with a felony murder. Felony murder. And uh, it's unintended murder. But it occurred during a felony, which is the same thing as like a higher level robbery. Because mm. it could be like a petty robbery, it's not the same. Like stealing $500 is not the same as like a bank. Yeah. So felony murder, I'm assuming, is like the next level. It's like a real bad crime. But yes. on top of that, from my perspective of what third degree murder was, was that third degree murder comes from the action of doing a behavior that knowingly can cause death 
but their intent going into it was not obviously to kill that person. Unintended for, murder. That's yeah, right. for example, someone's in a crowd, they shoot off a gun into the sky because they're having a fun party, but then that goes and kills somebody. Like That would they not be know, third degree. That, that would be third degree because they know that shooting a gun in, in any direction, yeah. that bullet can go and kill somebody. Yeah, but, but shooting a gun in your backyard... Like, no, 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 like that's party. a crime. No, yeah, he's that, in like a crowded crime. area. Yeah, yeah, in yeah, a crowd, yeah. yeah. So, so in public, definitely. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's If you're crime. on your property and you're shooting into a fence, obviously that's different. But no, that's still no, no, illegal. It, it's that's still, still it depends illegal. on the state. Yeah, okay. it's illegal okay. here, yeah. but in Alabama, you go ahead and do it. Yeah. Um, and you know, in the Derek Chauvin case, where this guy is saying, "I can't breathe," but he continues to go onto his neck. He's like, "Okay." This guy's saying I can't breathe, so there is, like, he knows that this could kill him if it is to suffocate him. Mm -hmm. um, See, you're bringing up a phenomenal point, and I like where you're headed, because this is where the teeter is, you know, in terms of the law, like, who's a good lawyer and what are your arguments, right? Because if he's using excessive force, which is against the law, right, Civil Rights of Act of 1871... Uh, which also is commonly they refer to it as Section 1983, which I don't get it. I don't know why it's called that. Mm. Um, but it is, it's, the quote is, it is unlawful for someone acting in an official government capacity to deprive another person of their constitutional rights. Now, this is where I don't like the law because... If they're not liable as police officers on duty and the department is, then that guy can technically do whatever he wants, whether it's excessive force or not. And then if it is excessive force, you have then what the body cam says, why we have body cams today, what the guys are saying around him. Mm -hmm. But then at the end of the day, it's also what the lawyer can argue best. And that's where this second degree murder really comes in. Mm -hmm. I do think second degree is a bit intense, but obviously it's better than the death. I don't know if he should... Obviously, if he dies, it's the only way the police are going to learn. But this, we're not that country. We're not hanging our criminals like for the public to see. Okay, it's only Epstein we do that to. But um, I'm just kidding. Um, it's not a joke. Um, yeah. But we should look at you know. It's not a joke. How do we define excessive force, or what? How is excessive force defined? Not we, but so beyond what a reasonable officer would do under the same circumstance. But they're focusing on the objectiveness of, uh, of the force used versus whether the arrestee or the bookie um, was injured. So it, it's not actually taking into account, once again, the people. You know, this is always my argument with institutions. You know, they, you're made for the people, but you don't care about the people. It's, all, it's obvious sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but how are you supposed to know these conditions of an individual, whether... They have health conditions or they're on drugs or this or that. Like, how are you supposed to know these things going into an arrest while you're committing an arrest on a civilian? Well, well yeah. they actually had an idea that he was on drugs, right? Just because of the way he was acting. Yes. Right. So, you know, that, that, you know, they like, they obviously like bring that up like multiple times. And, uh, when I'm watching the video, I was getting this, you know, so I've seen it, you know, obviously a long time ago. But, you know, rewatching it now, um, I'm watching these police, you know, like do their job, right? And, you know, just a little background story on myself. Um, I, at one point, wanted to be a police officer, right? I was an explorer. Oh, I didn't know with that. The, yeah, I was an explorer with the, you know, with the, you know, the Department of Public Safety mm -hmm. in, like, Sunnyvale. And uh, I... Uh, been on a lot of like ride-alongs, right? I've wow. seen arrests go down, you know, I've seen, you know, from like their side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm watching these police do this job, right? And that's why I was telling you guys, it's like, all this is irrelevant. Everything, you know, in terms of, oh, the drugs here, the pie, this, it's all irrelevant. Because it's about how the police are conducting themselves making this arrest, right? They're grow. you can see them growing frustrated with them, these types of things. And that's where this term de-escalation comes in right and that was the biggest thing uh, that I noticed was wrong with this whole like situation he's on drugs he's freaking out right okay so that one cop that's what that's why I wanted you to like keep watching because I was watching that one cop remember they finally get him out of his car mm -hmm. and the one cop goes and takes him and just has him like sit down yeah that perfect yeah. you know what they should have done they should have let him like sit there talk 
freak out all he wants until he calms down. Uh-huh. Talk, right? Conduct your investigation. Yeah. Go around, you know, get all the facts, interview the witnesses, just let him sit there. Yeah. Right? And then when you try and get him in the car, if he starts, like, you know, like fighting or whatever, you just sit and wait because you already got him beat. He's yeah. in cuffs. He's going out. He's going to jail no matter what. Yeah. Right? But they're getting, they just want to, like, shove him in there, do this thing. He's fighting, right? And it's just, like, really all they could have done was just, like, waited. They would have waited another 10 minutes. Yeah. You know, sitting there. Remember, cops get paid by the hour. They're not in a rush. Believe yeah. me, they're never in a rush. Yeah. They just didn't want to deal with this guy anymore. Mm-hmm. And that's where the issue, you know, it comes up here. Yeah, you know, like, uh, clearly, so we have de-escalation protocol. We have laws set in place to, like, how you're supposed to act with anybody yeah. who's committed, right? So it's called the First Step Act, which, for instance, prohibits restraints on pregnant women and saw, which is, this was crazy to me. Solitary confinement on juveniles. They were locking kids up in solitary. I can't imagine. Can you imagine like the darkness in yeah, that person's yeah. mind? Well, my thing, dude, is like you have to like put yourself, you know, us, you know, especially me as a guy. I don't know about you guys as men, but um, imagine if like you're just like sitting there and all of a sudden these guys, you know, like they come up on you and they're, you know, <laughs> pulling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're like, yeah. You're, you're naturally you know like yeah you're you gonna squirm I mean? you're gonna yeah. squirm right away that. yeah and then so and then that and then it that but because you do that that gives them the excuse to no animal you know, because then it, because then it creates the resisting arrest yes Sorry, yes and that's a, and that's another fact I wanted to bring up in terms of resisting arrest right so they charge so and this is in terms the only stats I could find is between white and black right and black people are. So there's actually more white people arrested than black people. Do you guys know that? Yes. Actually, because there's more white people in black yeah, people in yeah, the country, obvious, right? Yeah. But <laughs> that's what eighty. That's but uh, uh, if, in Muslims. terms of these these arrests, a black person is eighty five percent more likely to get charged with resisting arrest, right? I don't well, know if you guys have seen like a lot of like I used to watch cops a lot, right? You know, I told you I don't want to be a cop, right? I was into this. Yeah. Thing. Love and um, love watching yeah, that show. So like. <laughs> Um, I hated watching this Yeah, basically everybody fights. Everybody yeah. fights them. Doesn't matter, right? But certain people get charged with it, right? And then certain, you know, more than others, right? And then that just depends on like the temperament of that officer and what their yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the, the fact that down. the fact that mass shooting white guys are just alive still is stupid. Is why yeah. you gotta you gotta kill that guy on the spot, bro. And then just some guy who's reaching for his wallet, you're gonna shoot him down. You know what I mean? Come well, on. that but that that's, that's still kind of that like I mean that we could go on a segue of, of the whole shooting of police and police officer shootings and stuff like that. But when you're in the heat of the moment, it, you have to think. Uh, you have to think on the spot. Someone's I gonna go to their their waistband and grab something. You don't know what that is. You're gonna. Yeah. Obviously, you don't want to take their life, but it's kind of like it comes to the it's your life first theirs, and the yeah. statistically, what they've seen yeah. when that action is going through is they're grabbing. Well, that Which comes again, down to yeah. the training, right? Because you got to think back to the police training, dude. They sh- so like they don't show these guys a lot of like videos of you know them going you know to like their waistband and they're not doing anything, right? Yeah. They show them videos of them going to the waistband, turn around, shooting a cop, right? Yeah. So they got this hyper Which again like, is like if you yeah. have somebody in a courtroom where you're doing an investigation and you're basically asking another police, oh, what would you do? Mm-hmm. He can't give you a reasonable answer. He wasn't yeah. there. Yeah. He didn't know how the guy was yeah. acting. He didn't see whatever. Like, yeah. so there was actually this stuff. video on something in, on in, along those lines where a guy who was viciously against cops and obviously police shootings was given the opportunity to be put into the police police person's shoes and kind of try and de-escalate the situation and not need to pull out a gun and I think like I can't remember the exact video or the name of it but I'll look it up and maybe we could tag a link to it um, it was like eight times out of ten he couldn't de-escalate it or he had to go reach for his gun and he couldn't calm down the suspect or you know this or that and he in the end did did what 
a majority of the cops end up doing is pulling out their gun because they are fearful for their lives. Yeah. And you know, in some way, like some rights, it is justifiable to be fearful for your life. Oh yeah. You have a taser, but tasers sometimes don't work. If, if, yeah. you, if you have a guy on PCP, they aren't feeling it. Well, anything. you know, I think about it as, uh, you know, I've done a lot of like paintballing, right? Yeah. Uh, you guys know. <laughs> I've done a lot of paintballing, and I can't tell you how many times I've come within the 10 feet or 20 feet. Someone says, like, surrender, and I still shot them. Oh, 100%. You, know I mean? yeah. you just start yeah. shooting. It's the same deal. You don't deal. even think it's about a, it. It's, it's the same type of situation. Yeah. Right, obviously, but and I can only imagine if it was in like real like, with guns, like it's like a whole different level. I mean, you know, when you're like it's, yeah. If you think you're going into like a any type of like, situation, you're gonna get into a gunfight. Like, let yes. me tell you, that is a scary feeling. But police officers don't have an easy job. They know this. Everybody knows this. So you know, therefore, excuses are not acceptable because they went into this knowing. They were going to face these type of situations and they just have to be able to deal with it, right? They're supposed to make the right decisions, right? And that's why I wanted you guys to, uh, you know, listen to that one thing I sent you, right? The little, like, I think it was like six minutes long. Uh, but it's this, like, this guy, he's a cop in Georgia. He's saying he watched the whole thing and he was just, like, sickened as to how they handled the whole thing. Yeah. He's like, that's not, you know, that's, 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 that's not the, how it was supposed to go down. That's not a, that's not what they teach you how to arrest people yeah, or how yeah. to do things. And now, so we were, we were talking about, you know, generally, even with Chauvin and what, and all of the hundreds of other cases that exist before this, the mainstream ones, right? But mm -hmm. police officers, like the individual who may do something, you know, they, they're immune from liability when they're performing their official duties, right? So you would then go and sue the department, right? You sue the city, actually. You sue, okay, fair enough. You sue yeah. the city, um, civil, right? Never mm -hmm. mind. But um, technically, right, private individuals, they're not usually allowed to sue the individual. So you can't say, so when the police department, for instance, uses the example of, oh, it's one bad apple, it's a rare case, Okay, then let me go after that one guy because I don't think police officers are all bad. And when you're not allowing me to go after the individual, I have to go after the city and the department. Then you paint me once again <laughs> as the enemy who doesn't like police. And then you really, at least PR-wise, th those things are really easy to shut down PR-wise. But this section 1983, which is the Civil Rights Act of 1871, it gives you that case or that cause for action when indeed we can decide that, hey, this might be a little bit excessive force, right? And it's a good thing that even a little bit excess, but again, it comes down to how good your lawyer is, really, um, and how much media coverage you can get, because nowadays you can't just do anything to anybody without it be, there being, like, consequences, serious mm -hmm. consequences. Well, it's because there's, like, video now, and that's what, like, keeps everybody in check, right? Yeah. And I'll tell you, cops hate the body cameras. They hate they the body do. cameras and they, they hate it when you got your phone out recording them. They hate it's it your right. because it's your way to keep them accountable. Yeah. Right. And that's what's been missing. Right. That's why how in the beginning we're talking about corruption and these things is because they could go out and literally get away with murder. They did for a long time. Yeah. And now we're finally able to hold them accountable. That was the whole point of the Derek like Chauvin case, whatever the hell his name is, is because. This is the first way of keeping cops accountable. So let right? me ask you both a question. Um, would you rather have a human cop or like a robot cop? Because when robot cops come, it's not going to be that easy for them to have a human touch with you and understand your story. If they deem you, you know, like a robot, his code is saying, okay, he's a criminal, he's just going to, whatever his program says to do to whatever level of criminal, He's gonna go ahead and do it right there. So if he uses excessive force, breaks your arm, you got nothing to do. It's not even a person that you can sue. It's just a robot. Yeah. Well, I think like the robot cops might even be like better, to be honest. And that's because uh, I imagine they wouldn't arm them. That's one, right? And uh, they can. Their their whole point is to maybe subdue or keep you in place, right? And then they wait for the cops with guns to show up. Right, and that's how actually like policing is done in other countries, you know. See, but it, I, 
as much as I agree with you that mm -hmm. like okay they they could just subdue them, but what if the pe person keeps on fighting like George Floyd did? Then yeah. like then those robots continue to try and subdue it, but then no, it ends up so hurting that, it. So that's the thing. That's what I mean. I'm sorry to cut you off. Like, they're all, in this case, if a police officer is a robot, the human's always going to get the benefit of the doubt until the other humans arrive, right? So if they're resisting that robot cop, that's totally fine. Fight that cop. Fight that one, right? But, like, when the, the people cops show up, right, or when the real cops, like, show up, then you know in terms of like fighting them and stuff you know hey like you know good luck right like they're gonna do whatever they're gonna what be I'm able saying, to enforce the law what i'm saying is like they don't have the emotional well well with all to know that this person is fighting because he's on drugs emotion or like the emotions aren't there like hey this guy's just freaking out he needs to calm down he's the, the robot you're saying is just programmed to subdue him instead of like hey like we just need him to calm down. I think well, that could really cause that could cause the same reaction that you were just saying that yeah. the cops didn't de-escalate the situation. That's they just tried to subdue him, put him in the car, and deal with the deal with the rest of the problem later. So like, check this out. This is actually this. And I'm glad uh, I actually like watched this last night. So there's this new technology out, and they call them smart cameras, right, or whatever. And basically, these guys are like. They're building these this like camera that's like looking at your face. So if you stand there, right, it's gonna stand, it's gonna look at you. So, and then it it starts speaking, you know, like saying as to what it thinks that your business is or whatever. And uh, it was interesting because there's people in like this. This is in like Philadelphia or New York or something. And uh, this thing was there, and there's like, oh, this person's probably traveling or whatever. And it's all awkward how it says it correct because it's a machine. It's like traveling busy blah, 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 or, or, or whatever and this lady was like wow that's crazy i'm actually visiting and i'm going back to the airport now or whatever and so this camera was looking at her the way she was standing what she was wearing everything and it was it knew it, yeah essentially and it knew as to what her business might be and uh if she was, you know, like whatever, you know, like so whatever. This, so this is what I'm saying. So this, if these robots had that technology, then they would know, okay, this person's probably on drugs. This person. So, so we already not, have so this technology, doing. like all the way from mm -hmm. to Brazil to England is very strong. This uh, facial recognition, like your temperature and how fast your heart rate is. Mm -hmm. And China has the system. Quick little quirk about yeah. that quirk, bear claw too. My sister's friend's dad created um the software that china uses for like the facial recognition and shit mm -hmm. and that guy died mysteriously of a heart attack bro really <laughs> yeah. wow. he was very young wow. he bathed that he died wow that's yeah. crazy <laughs> That's that's crazy. Insane. But the future of policing is yeah, that yeah it's and gonna be that it they're gonna be and that's what i mean so like you're saying it's gonna know that you're on drugs already right okay. it's gonna know that you're agitated or your anything like that yeah exactly so they know what they're getting into okay uh, like any type your of like situation dilated yeah. Like this. to tie it back to that just Derek Chauvin instead of going into theoretical mm -hmm. yeah. um you know especially the the main factor of today and the thing that was very popular recently um was his conviction of you know uh the second and third degree murder uh and, and the question, do you think that was justified or do you think it should have been in voluntary manslaughter or voluntary manslaughter? Um, and with that being said, the differences in the, in the max years of jail sentencing, first degree murder being death or 25 to life sentence, second degree being 15 years to life, third degree being 10 to 40 years. Man, involuntary manslaughter is 10 to 16 months. And it's extended if it's like through reckless actions, drunk driving, texting while driving, so but on and so forth. It's fifteen to life, but he'll be out in seven. Like. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, but, and then yeah. man, and then sorry, voluntary That's manslaughter good. is ten years. So you know, out of outside of the you know what what could happen in the future, take that out of account just for right now. Do yeah, you yeah. think that he should have been charged with second and third degree, or do you think it should have been a manslaughter charge? I don't know if the third degree is necessary, but I don't know if it's a manslaughter charge either. So, my opinion, uh, 
I don't give two fucks what he was charged with, right? I know our, like, justice system, right, if the people get charged with outlandish things all the time, whatever, they appeal, things get changed, right? But that's was pretty convicted. Much, he was yeah, convicted, He was convicted. Charged. You know what he's going to do? He appealed, right? And then a m- months, maybe a year from now, they're going to redo it, and then he's going to get, like, a lesser charge. I mean... So it, I don't even care. The point is, he was convicted of something, so he's being held accountable for his actions. And now it's just like the same point, you know, just not too long ago, we had that one chick cop who, who shot the guy and she tried to say it was her, like, taser or whatever. Yeah. I don't give a fuck what the, bra or what, like, whatever it is, she just needs to go to jail because she needs to be held accountable for her actions. Uh-uh. The same way we're all held accountable. Yeah. Doesn't, I, like I said, the charge, I don't care if he goes to jail for a month. He just needs to go to jail. That's all. That's 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 my yeah, bottom I'll point. That, I, I'll say that like he can't just go to a regular jail. They kill cops in there. You know what I mean? So he's well, gonna yeah, go to he's a country gonna club. Be, yeah. He's gonna go to like a country club ass prison, right? No, so I got the story. I don't like, think so. I, Definitely not. Country. Definitely well, not. I understand. But he's, he's, he's gonna, gonna need be, to be secure, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Wherever he goes, alone or in a. He's not gonna be in jail. That sounds like an even more. He's gonna be with the pedophiles and stuff, and then essentially he's gonna get. He's going to be in his cell for like 20 hours of the day or 22 hours of the day. Yeah, but you see, like my example that I have is like Conrad Murray, right? The guy that who Michael Jackson died under his watch, right? Which is Michael Jackson just... So AEG is actually the talent agency affiliated with Michael, and they hired Conrad Murray to um, watch him while he takes propofol, which is just like a general anesthetic. You know, that's how he gets high. Real, real badass Michael Jackson. Yeah. Um, anyway... So he, even at that time, up to Michael, he had a history of people dying on his watch through misdiagnosis, okay? This is, this is the guy that they fucking hired. Mm-hmm. And so Michael Jackson dies under his watch, propofol. Murray gets involuntary manslaughter, okay? Mm-hmm. Four years he gets. He serves two and he's out. He gets his license just revoked about two years for killing a legend, bro? I don't know, dude. I mean... Yeah. I don't know. But, I don't know if that's enough. But me. that's what I mean, dude. That's why I don't care about whatever people get convicted of, their time, whatever. Dude, like, our justice system is not very good, okay? Like, our justice system is not fair. It wasn't set out to be fair. And different things are going to happen for different people, especially in a different, like, social status. My whole point of just the deal is, like I said already, it's just accountability. As long as you go to jail and you serve some type of time. If I accidentally kill someone, believe me, my I'm going down. They're going <laughs> to bury me, right? They might bury me a little bit harder than they buried that doctor from, you know, for like Michael Jackson. But I'm not a rich doctor. You know what I mean? So that's just how our society works, right? I don't know if he was rich either. I think there's just... He's a, a rich doctor, com- dude. He's a compulsive he's, gambler also. I think yeah, he's, uh, he's rich, dude. But, like, the bottom line is he was rich. And so he's going to get different type of treatment than... No, I don't know. Dude, better lawyers. No, no. Yeah. Really he, exactly. no, no. I don't know if he was rich, but he was well-connected to like one power player or another. If you're well-connected with people like that, you're rich. And if you're a, especially if you're a doctor, imagine how much he's charging Michael Jackson to be his doctor. He's, I bet you he, he was probably driving well, S-Class Well, I mean, the talent Mercedes. agency picks up the check, actually, so not Michael. Or whatever. Not Michael Direct. You believe in me, he's charging them up the ass for whatever. Fair enough. You know what I mean? But this is not like you're not there. It doesn't yes. matter. That's We're, besides go the back, point. yeah. So I I definitely agree with you that people should be held accountable for their actions. Yes. I personally believe that the, the murder charge was a bit aggressive. I think that in appeals court he will end up getting a manslaughter charge. Whether it's voluntary or non voluntary, I do agree with you that there should be some sort of accountability he should go to jail yes. for some amount of time the other cops it's hard to say where they're leaning on his neck yeah if that's another thing it's like hey you were watching it so if he on, gets so charged forth. with manslaughter they need to, this was comes down to my accountability they need to get charged with accessory and especially if it's like you know if they charge him with murder <laughs> they need to get charged with accessory because if we're all hanging out i accidentally like kill Corey. You're going down too, and that's what? just yeah. That's it's how it's how it goes. That's how our system. It's accessory to murder, right? If I get charged, if if I if I get charged with like murder for killing Corey, 
and you are here with me, you are getting charged with accessory, you are going to jail as well. See, but my view of all in all is a bit extreme. I think that if you intentionally and premeditated and like kill somebody, I think you should die. I think our jails are overpopulated yeah. enough. We're yeah. fucking good. Well, that's like a different thing, right? I and think that's, hang them in the fucking square. That, that, that ties back into, as I mean this, to the where like guillotine. the modern day slaves are general like population, right? Because of these like for profit like prisons and. Right and and even our <laughs> no, like they system. get eight cents a day, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's so like district it's attorneys. More. They boost their career by sending like people to jail. Right, that's yeah. how they move up. Doesn't matter. They, like they don't care if you're innocent, guilty, whatever. They just want to send you to jail. I think they care if you're guilty because they're the justice. Department. They really don't care, bro. If they have, that's why they say I have enough to charge this guy or I don't. Because uh, I want to go to court and I want to win because it doesn't matter. I don't care if he's innocent or guilty as long as I win. That's good on my record. That's how my career improves, right? Yeah. And that's why I mean, like, dude, our justice system is is it's outdated and it needs some major reconstruction. You know, all of those are phenomenal points. I think we've had a really good discussion. I wanted to, before we share a couple stories, I wanted to touch on how mafia-like, how organized crime-like these various police departments that function as bureaucratic organizations, how mafia-like they are. Not to say that they're involved necessarily in criminal activities, right, publicly, officially, but... Uh, how they function, right? They're a brotherhood. Don't turn on us. Don't speak against us or we'll fuck you up, you know? It's a union thing. I mean, dude, this is yeah. how La Cosa Nostra works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's, you know, it's a union. You, you know, you said it right. It's like a brotherhood, right? You and die a cop. You're not going to yeah. not be a, a exactly. cop anymore. You don't walk it's away. It's just like being like a soldier, right? If you die, there's always going to be, even if you don't, if you have no family, there'll always be one soldier at your funeral. To go and like it's see you off. Like it's just like that. being a gangster. Yeah. The only way out of the life is in a box. Well, you know, right? they actually say, or they used to say back in, what it was like the 80s or 90s, uh, that the biggest gang, the biggest, baddest gang was the police. I mean, wow. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. like a known, you know, back when you know, like Tupac time or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tupac. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share like, just to show you like or give you an image of what policing looks like in the in a third world context i'll tell you my first ever story about a police officer and my interaction with them i was actually this was in karachi pakistan i was i don't know maybe maybe five years old that was but i remember this one thing very specifically uh, my mom was driving from our home to somewhere we were in like a corolla that we had back in there we had a corolla for a long time that's really it's like a 1980s Corolla or something it was cool and you know you guys know my mom she's like soft-spoken you know like nice person or whatever so but we basically got pulled over by a cop but in in Karachi it's like the guy's just like he's literally he waves you over yeah. you know he's like come here yeah so then you stop so my the first thing he walked up okay he didn't say hello okay he wasn't like how are you he said give me money I'll let you go that was the first thing that he said. That was my first time seeing a police officer, okay? Yeah. He had a nice white suit on, but incredibly corrupt guy, and he yeah. was a nobody. Can dude, you that's imagine? That's how, like, all cops are in other, like, countries. It's, like, the same thing in, like, Europe, dude. You can just pay them off or whatever. Well, I don't Mexico, know about that, dude. You pay. I, I, I saw in Mexico, Europe. Yeah, 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 but you in, in Pakistan, it's, like, nothing. So my mom literally gave him 700 rupees, which right now is $4.57. And yeah. he didn't say goodbye. He just took the money, put it in his pocket, and he walked away. He didn't say, you can go. He walked away. <laughs> He walked away. Yeah, on to the next. Yeah, yeah, straight up. And and that was that's how I've always seen the police, you know what I mean? And when I come to this country and I hear this these same things that these guys are fucking people up, I don't think that's like, that why much can't different. we just pay them? Yeah, yeah, no, legit. Like it's yeah. like just pay them not to do that. They won't yeah. do it, you know? Yeah. But that's how I thought I just like it's not any better here, right? You know, we came from the land of the free. You know, home of the brave. I didn't realize that being brave, you gotta be brave. You don't get shot by your people who are supposed to defend you. You know what I mean? That's real fucking brave. You know, and I always saw that as a contradiction uh, when we have this certain American dream. You know, and um, policing it and first world policing and safety. That's one of the main reasons why. 
today, even though we can't say we're the greatest country, that would be one of the reasons, but we don't even have that in order, you know, granted, we don't have any other else shit in order, but, you know, that that's one of the values of the American dream, and that's not there anymore either, you know. Um, but policing, I think Chauvin, whether you guys agree with the conviction and, and whatnot, what really matters and what really needs to happen is, is in the future that these events don't occur. Because from what I recall, in, in like, there's a, a same thing that we thought, remember Cory Beckler in the same county, that girl, they, they shot her up or whatever, but we, when we watched the video, she had a knife and she was like stabbing someone. So it got blown out of proportion a little bit. I mean, wait, which video? This is like 16 year old girl in the same county. She got yeah. shot. Oh, yeah. that's the one. That's the and one. she's, Brian, yeah. but I know it's not she's Brian. like this. Dude. It, is it, is it is Brian. It is Brian. She's okay. literally stabbing somebody. So, yeah. And she like the, the police officer walks up and she says hello to him. So she knows that he's there. Yeah. So if she's going like that. That she was just trying to die. You know, that's yeah, why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that. Yeah. And so to, like, uh, like usually police. The, you know, they like shoot people to uh, protect themselves, right? But a, the guy a, is a like somebody. legal way, yeah, and that that's what I say that is a like justifiable um, way of like shooting someone. Even as us, as like yeah. if we owned our own gun, and we would be able to shoot someone to st stop somebody of from being stabbed. Of yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, and then, you know that kind of ties into another controversial thing of. You know LeBron James's reaction to that. I don't know if you guys know know about the whole uh, controversy with him going on right now. Where this obviously happened at you know I would say one of the worst times ever was you know I think it was like 20 minutes before or after Chauvin was convicted of the you know murder. There's been a few of those that have happened yeah. at really bad times. Yeah, and, and then <laughs> so so Chauvin was convicted like 20 minutes before or after this event occurred. And so, and then right away, once the video is released, it goes viral, and LeBron James uh, tweets out a picture of the police officer, and says, and, and his name, and like either hashtag or something, and says, yeah. you're next. Like, in a way, like, hey, we are coming after you. Yeah, but dude, you're, you're, that's... You're fucked. And so, but, so what happened was, I think it, it could be two, five minutes later, whatever amount of time, it was a very short amount of time. He ended up deleting. Is that like a social autocracy? What kind of a, what yeah? Kind of so so he deletes the tweet, and but every like everybody saw LeBron it. James, everybody's seen it. So yeah. then he tweets out another thing instead of saying, "Hey, I I, I should have waited to see what the well, all the information and so on and so forth." <laughs> he and doesn't say he's wrong in any way. He's like, "Oh, I deleted that tweet because I realized that it, there's are there already too much hate." in this society today and it was generating more hate that's so what he said yeah that's what he said that's what she said yeah <laughs> i mean i mean lebron is cool he built a school right i mean he's not a an arrogant millionaire you know what i mean i mean he's trying to do good eventually for his community he he should have apologized clearly he fucked up but um you know that's he's not the only one with this power yeah, I, I mean, I think, you know... He was passionate. Like, you know, he like, was to wrong, be honest, I think, passionate. you know, people care too much about what other people think or say. I mean, he's saying, you know, like, you're next is just because, like, you're the next cop that's going to, you know, hopefully go to jail or whatever. Obviously, he wants cops to go to jail. Fine, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm personally indifferent to his, his opinion or what he says. Like, I don't really care. I mean, yeah, there's a height, you know, if, if I'm a cop right now... I'm definitely gonna, you know, be more cautious. Be more cautious. Your gun. I'm not gonna shoot somebody if I don't have to shoot them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I don't know. There's there's been a few other ones. Uh, there was the one, I think in like Chicago or something. Like the like, I think the kid was like 13 years old or something like that. Oh, got man. shot that by the cop. Bad. Yeah. bad video, right? Yeah. But I saw I saw a still frame. Um, so when I first watched the video, I'm like, oh, infuriated. This guy's going to jail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Get him. But then I saw this like still frame of like the cop comes up to him because you know he says like drop the gun, right? And the kid kind of just like throws the gun and he puts his hands up and then he shoots him. 
know what I mean? It, but in the still video, like, in the, the kid second, had the gun in his it's, hand. It's, he oh, had no. the gun, yeah. exactly. Yeah. He had the gun. And because he had a gun, so in terms of, you know, justifiable, like, shootings, if you have a gun, it doesn't yeah. matter what, if you threw it down, like, it's justified, they're not going to jail. Yeah, and that same thing happened with the Mah Mahia Bryant, was that they are trying to argue that when she was in motion of stabbing the girl, and when she gets shot, she was actually going to drop the knife, but... In reality, you can see in the video, she dropped the knife after she was shot like four times. Dude, yeah. she yeah. was not going to drop the yeah. knife. She was going. She was, the she momentum was, I was she, in that I person. thought she already got her once yeah, or something. Dude. She, was she like, may have. I she was, know. I mean, you know, like I said. That was know, real intense. Uh, my favorite line from like Forrest Gump. Stupid is what stupid does. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, that's just... Just stupid, you know what I mean? Like it is yeah. what it is. You know, type, you know things like that. It's just, just like the same thing. This guy in like Chicago, right? He was like running, or I don't know if it was like Chicago, but it was like somewhere. He's like running, uh, got shot in the back, right? Cop, oh. you know, you know, he literally before he's dying, he's like, "Why'd you shoot me?" The cops like, "You had a gun." <laughs> like the guy will obviously wasn't trying to shoot the cop. He's trying to run away because people get scared. Yeah, you know what I mean. But he got shot. He has the gun. Hey. You know what can I mean? you do? Yeah, yeah. that's that's. So just you never run away from a predator. Actually, that predator's instincts get like a cheetah. If you, yeah. another thing, you turn your back on a on a leopard on a cheetah. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna, it's gonna yeah. Pounce yeah. On well, you. well, well. That's what I mean. As in, uh, from the beginning of the inception of police, right? We had this like predatory form of like, policing, right? Yes. They're coming to get you. It's this adversarial relationship. Yes. Not just with you know. Obviously, there's deep-rooted adversarial thing with like the black community. There's a lot of distrust there, right? There's been a lot of bad things that have happened at the hands of police, right? I'm told you guys my family story, right? You know things that have happened to my own grandfather from the police, right? Mm. I've been in like some situations with the police as well, right? Where you know a few police officers they passed right by me, but one of them decided that I fit the description. You know what I mean? And uh, I was at I was at the mercy of this witness or whatever. Thank God she yeah. said it wasn't me. Because if she said it was me, my life would be very different today. Yeah. Uh, I would have been going down. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like I said, other police, they already passed by me. They, they knew I wasn't the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. this one decided, hey, he fits the description. And then, so it's, yeah, that just comes as this, you know, comes down to that this relationship that the public has with the police. Yeah, and I would say you, on that point, it's, you know, I am obviously the white guy. We have, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other than you, Jordan, you're the black guy. It's like, a, I even feel uncomfortable, at least in today's time, whenever I get pulled over. Oh, yeah. When a cop pulls me over, I still get uncomfortable. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I could only imagine what it's like for at least you two, yeah. you know, with the experiences and the involvement. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, that's the history of today. Yeah. It's, that it's, it's, yeah. it's dangerous. Like, I know it's, I know it's probably 10 times worse for you guys, but even for me, it's, uh, oh, like, yeah. I have, it's not a me too kind of thing. Yeah. It's more just like I under I I feel uncomfortable, so I couldn't imagine what it's yeah. like for both. of Well, you. you know, I just saw this uh, this guy I know. Um, his yes, yeah, so this guy I know. His friend was killed by a police officer. Um, his friend was white, and he was killed in less than two seconds from answering his door when the police knocked. Less than two seconds. Wow. There's a video. A minute and a half. And guess what? The police officers. You know, fine. They walked. This guy was going to his knees with his hands up. And they, he shot him like five times. Right there, here. there was something circulating the internet. At the, it was twenty twenty. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. The this couple, I believe, was in an argument, and it was about the husband playing video video games. That's too the much. one. That's yeah. the one I was talking and, about. Yeah. So and then they weren't comes, even arguing though. Yeah, it, it, they were I, playing the game together. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, yes. and then he still gets shot. He gets yeah. shot. Yep. So and it was horrible. Yeah, and she had to sit there watch her boyfriend, her husband die. She couldn't. Eat, the cops wouldn't even let her. They first they weren't administering aid, and they didn't even let her go up and like touch him. I think they handcuffed him. 
after they shot him. Yeah, it's it's horrible what they and do. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 not right. You know, it's it's not right, and it's like fundamentally, you know, things have changed. If you're that scared, that's why that one audio clip I wanted you guys to hear. Uh, this one like police officer saying like we as police we should not be going to all of these calls that we get there's no reason as to why I thought but the fact is when you get called you got to go there and you have to do your job and you're expected to do your job a certain way and you know a lot of times they don't do it how they were trained to do it or, or you whatever you act on the instant exactly right? What I think speaks the most volumes is what Corey Bertlaw said earlier, is that even he himself gets concerned when he gets pulled over by a police officer, which again tells us that it's not necessarily about a race when it comes down to shitty protocol. And I mm -hmm. think even today, what we talked about Chauvin, I think today was one of these very significant conversations that we had that definitely you can see the things are not always black and white when it comes down to these rare occurrences. Mm -hmm. You know, I think today mm -hmm. that we had a phenomenal conversation, not only on our perspectives, but actually facts of the case. And yeah. I think that it was a very healthy conversation that we had. So yeah. thank you for everyone tuning in that got this far. I know I had a great time. Um, thank you both for coming through. As always, my name is Ellie Lake, and I'm sitting here with Jordan Brown and Corey Bearclaw. Thank you very much. Peace. Good night.